What's up YouTube and welcome back to the channel. With the temperature finally warming up, camping season is here. So what better time than now to do a long-term review on my classic ARB fridge. So from what I remember, I've had this fridge for roughly about four or five years now. It was actually one of the first additions I got for the Land Cruiser when I got it. And the reason why I got it was with intentions of going overlanding or uh, weekend trips, I would be able to carry um, cold drinks, carry food without it spoiling, you know, maybe even carry some ice cream, who knows. But um, that was the initial impression of what I was doing and I didn't really want to invest into like a, a Yeti cooler, not because they don't work, but if you've ever checked out a Yeti cooler, you can see the physical size is actually really big. However, on the inside, the, the, the part that you can actually put food in and use is relatively small due to the thick insulation of the cooler itself. That's why it works so well. So being a Land Cruiser owner, obviously I have tons of space. Um, this guy is the 63 quart, so it's not the biggest one, but it's, uh, you know, it's bigger than the standard 50 that you would see in a JK Jeep or uh, maybe a 4Runner or something like that. We have all this trunk space, so um, I figured, you know, the 63 would be a good choice, and it was. Um, you know, I've been using it since. So when I got this guy brand new, it came with two wires. One for the regular house socket, I believe it was the 220 volt, and the other one was for a cigarette lighter. And of course, I took the cigarette lighter and plugged it in. Everything lit up right away, and um, I thought everything was fine. So I was using the fridge like that for maybe about six months or so, or, or something of that nature, and um, I'd noticed that the fridge wasn't getting really cold. Like it was a little bit uh, colder than the outside temperature, but it wasn't getting to fridge levels, let alone freezer levels. So um, I dug a little bit deeper, and apparently the cigarette lighter doesn't flow enough current to actually get this guy to about zero degrees. So ARB actually supplies uh, an extra set of wires. I think it's like, I don't know, 20, 30 bucks. Um, and um, that one you connect directly to the battery and into the, the fridge itself. And that fixes the problem. That makes your fridge super cold. And I actually have a video on that. Um, I'll leave a link in the description down below along with the, uh, the wire kit. Um, basically me installing that specific wire kit and fixing the um, why the fridge isn't getting cold issue. After I fixed the initial wiring issue, the fridge has been actually pretty good. Some of the things that I do like about this fridge is number one, the ease of use. Now on this guy, very simple, you basically turn it on and the fridge starts running. Um, the temperature itself you can set to however high or low you like and what's nice about it is it does have memory. So even if you turn the fridge off and then turn it back on again, it will be at the same temperature setting as you had before. On the inside, it does have a decent amount of space for food and drink. And unlike a cooler, you don't have to go buy ice all the time. You basically just have to turn it on and you're ready to go. Another thing I like about this fridge is when I hooked it up to the Switch Pro a while ago, I can actually turn it on from the comfort of the driver's seat with a flip of a switch. Actually, that's more a thumbs up to the Switch Pro than the fridge itself. However, the fridge is actually pretty cool to where it's programmed. Let's say if it's on right now and the Switch Pro cuts its power, it doesn't switch to off mode. It basically, even though there's no power and obviously the fridge itself is off, it still stays in the on, the button still stays in the on position. So when you turn the Switch Pro back on, the fridge automatically comes back to life. So things I don't like about the fridge. Number one would be this lid. Obviously it doesn't open that far because it's actually inside the uh, Land Cruiser right now. What I usually do is I'll, I'll slide the top out of the drawer to get it to open further, but they could have put some uh, shocks or a spring or something with a little bit of tension to keep this guy up because most of the time you're trying to sort through the stuff in here you need both hands and you know you really can't 
Another thing that I don't like, and I've run into actually a few problems before, is the power cord. The way I've had this power cord routed is actually along the uh, drawer system itself. And whenever I slide it out, it doesn't have a problem, but sometimes that power cord falls into the cabinets. And when I try to close it, it pinches and shorts out the wire, hence blowing the fuse. I've actually had that happen a couple of times. Um, there's no major damage to anything. Just, you know, replace the fuse and wrap the uh, wire with some electrical tape and it's still going. But it would have been nice if uh, ARB made a uh, little clip or something that holds the wire up as opposed to let it, you know, kind of just slide around on the floor because clearly they made the fridge and the drawers and they expect you to use them together. So uh, minus point for the uh, fridge design here. Another thing with the fridge is it doesn't get cold fast. So it actually takes a while to get the fridge completely cold. And to remedy that, what I would recommend for everybody that actually has this fridge or any fridge that um, fits into the back of their uh, Overland vehicle is to prime the fridge the night before. So what I usually, what I, what I have to do is plug in the house cord, um, into the garage and the night before we go uh, and you know any type of off-roading or, or camping or whatever and let the fridge prime itself so let it cool down all the way if you want you can actually start putting some stuff in there and that way by the time you're ready to go in the morning the fridge is already cold the stuff inside is already cold you won't have to wait for it to get cold so if you put like a i don't know a, a warm bottle of water in there or a room temperature bottle of water i should say um, you won't have to wait like three hours for it to be uh, icy cold and finally the main reason why i don't like this guy which is also the reason why i'm getting rid of it is actually let me show you by the time you've got your drinking essentials packed in for the weekend you barely have enough space for food so that's just not gonna work barely enough space for a loaf of sourdough but maybe if I went to a frozen pizza there we go that works so I don't know about you guys, but eating frozen pizza on overland trips every single time gets old pretty quick. So the only way I've found to remedy this issue is to get the 82 quart. This is the big one. This is the 82 quart ARB fridge. And let me show you, obviously it's going to have the same single hand issue opening, but as you can clearly see, there is tons of space inside the fridge even with the same amount of drink and of course where would we be without the infamous sourdough test sourdough in fridge closes just fine and just for fun let's throw the pizza in too perfect moral of the story guys when you're shopping for a fridge make sure you buy the biggest one that you can possibly fit in your vehicle if not, you'll end up like me and having to buy it twice. On that note, if you're looking for a gently used fridge to carry your drinks around on your overlanding adventures, hit me up. What do you think about the fridge situation? Should you go bigger, smaller? What do you guys have? What do you guys want? Let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, don't be shy. Make sure you go ahead and hit that like button. And for more Land Cruiser and Overland content, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.